in today's video we will learn how to create a network diagram and solve critical path method questions for the PMP exam now critical path method is not only important for PMP exam but it is equally important for engineering students as well as B school students because the scheduling options which you learn with the critical path method is equally taught in B school as well as in engineering colleges so this video will be helpful for these people as well so let's go to our whiteboard and learn the critical path method in detail and we will solve some sample questions as well welcome to my whiteboard guys so first we will start with understanding the definition of critical path okay so i have written the definition right here for you so a critical path is the longest duration through a project network diagram so let's take a minute to understand what it means so if you see that this is a project network diagram where this is the start and this is the end and this network diagram has three paths so one path is a b c d e one path is a w x and e and there is another path which is a y and e okay now if the duration of these activities are uh, such uh, that a b c d e is the longest duration to complete this full act, uh, project then a b c d e is the critical path now it may happen that uh, activity w and activity x has uh, higher durations and so a w x and e can also become a critical path at that point of time okay so it depends on the duration as well as it depends on the dependencies of the activities so that being brings us to the second definition of uh, critical path so it is defined as the shortest time required to complete the project considering all the dependencies now what does dependency mean so if you see activity w here so it has a dependency on activity a so activity w cannot start before activity a similarly if you see activity e here so it has a dependency on x and d so activity e can only start after x and d both are over so these are called dependency so whenever you define a critical path with respect to the shortest time you should define it as the time required to complete the project considering all the dependencies so that is another way of defining critical path now why is critical path called critical okay so then he has to be answer to that right so why it is called critical because whenever the, there is any delay in a activity on the critical path the project gets delayed okay so as a good project manager you always need to pay attention to the activities on the critical path so in this figure which you see right here so we have to always pay attention to the activities of a b c d and e because any of the activities if gets delayed your whole project gets delayed so that is why a uh, critical path analysis is very important whenever you are doing a project okay we move on to another important definition of critical path which is called a near critical path which is the sub longest path near to the critical path for example if we take this network diagram and we say that a b c d e is the critical path with a time of 38 days and we say that a w x and e has a duration of 36 days and a y e has a duration of 32 days okay so what near critical path will mean is this path of a w x and e is the near critical path because it is the closest to the actual critical path and why it is important because if any of these activities w or x or a or e gets delayed this path can also become the critical path guys so that is why tracking of the subcritical path is also very important in line with tracking the critical path of a project so remember this definition of near critical path so whenever at the um, at the end of this session we will solve a problem we will see that uh, how a near critical path can also become a critical path when the duration of the activities in a near critical path increases okay now uh, with that let us try and move ahead and understand some more concepts of critical path okay first is if any activity in the critical path is delayed 
the project is delayed. So this is very important. Since the critical path is the longest duration path, now if any activity in the project uh, in the critical path is delayed, then the project gets delayed. So this is very important. So you need to keep this in mind and that is why critical path is so important. The second is there can be more than one critical path for a project, but having more than one critical path increases the risk of the project. Now, uh, it is a common misconception and uh, the PMP exam sometimes tests this also through some questions that um, it will ask that, okay, whether it is possible for a project to have more than one critical path. So you have to say here that yes, it is possible for, to have the, to, for the project to have more than one critical path. But if you have more than one critical path, it increases the risk of the project because the project manager now has to go and manage two or three critical paths. Okay. So it is not advisable to have more than one critical path of, of a project. Okay. The third point is a critical path can change as the project progresses. Okay. So this is very important because uh, uh, whenever a project is starting, uh, if you take this example that A, B, C, D, E is the critical path. Okay. Now, if the project is midway, so we are somewhere around uh, C. Okay. And maybe the activity C is getting delayed or there is some changes in the dependencies that now C is... Uh, uh, dependent on X, something like that. So the critical path can change. Now at that point of time, it may become that A, B, C, X, E becomes the critical path. Okay. So the critical path of the project can change as the project progresses. So that means that during the planning phase, if there is one critical path, it doesn't necessarily mean that during the execution phase, that will be only critical path. Okay. So you need to keep a very important thing that a critical path in a project can change as the project progresses. Okay. And the fourth item is, uh, as we discussed, that uh, a good project manager always does a hawkwise surveillance of the critical path, okay? Because uh, it is very obvious and it comes down to the first point that uh, if uh, you do not manage the critical path well and you do not uh, uh, keep a close watch on the critical path as a good project manager, the project can get delayed if any of the activity in the critical path gets delayed. So for the PMP exam uh, or maybe whenever you are studying the critical path topic, remember these four points. So these are very important takeaways of the critical path process. Now, next we will move and try to understand another important term with respect to the critical path topic, which is float. Okay. Now, what is called a float? The definition is right here it is the amount of time the early start of an activity can be delayed without delaying the project as a whole now you need to understand it a bit carefully so whenever we talk of uh, uh, activity there is uh, something called a early start and something called a late start so we will come here uh, in a bit now the early start of an activity is the earliest time you can start an activity okay and the late start of an activity is the most latest time you can start an activity okay now if i talk the definition of float it talks about the amount of time the early start of an activity can be delayed without delaying the project as a whole okay and in common lingo float is called the buffer time often we uh, in project we say that okay uh, this activity okay this can wait for a while because we have some buffer time to project for the for this particular activity okay so what we are actually saying is we are saying that okay this pro this activity has some float and it helps the project manager to deprioritize this activity for some time and focus on the activity which is maybe on the critical path. Okay. So with that, there is a very important point which you need to take away that the activities in the critical path does not have any float. So it is often said that the critical path is the path of zero float because in critical path, the activities does not have any float. Okay. Now, Moving ahead, in common lingo, float is also called the buffer time, as we have said. And the mathematical formula of float is uh, late start minus early start or late finish minus early finish. Okay. Now, if I move down, so this is how you represent the activity in the critical path method. Okay. And this is the secret tip which you need to keep in mind while answering problems with respect to the critical path method. So whenever you draw a network diagram, you draw it in this fashion. So let me take some time and explain what this uh, figure talks about. So this right here is the 
activity name okay so this activity is activity a here we write the duration of the activity maybe it can be months in in days in weeks okay so we write the duration here es is early start ls is late start so earliest when we can start this activity or latest when we can start this activity and ef is early finished lf is late finished so very intuitively early finish is early start plus the duration right it is very obvious and similarly late finish is late start plus duration okay so across this session whenever we draw an activity during the network diagram uh, problems which we will be solving next we will always denote the activity in this diagrammatic fashion where early start is here late start is here early finish is here late finish is here we write the activity name here and this is the duration now if we talk of float how can you determine the float through this diagram so float is the difference between early start minus late start or it is the difference between early finish minus late finish so it will always be same so that is with float sometimes float is often called slack in previous uh, project management lingo it was called slack but now uh, generally it is called float only the pmbok edition 6 uses the term float so whenever you are studying you always talk it as a float because slack has become a bit obsolete now that completes the theory part of the critical path method okay now next we will go towards the exact steps of how to solve a network diagram problem for critical path okay so here i have written down for you the four step process to solve problems using forward and backward pass method and this is the key method which is mostly used to solve critical path problems so i have written down the four steps which is involved uh, to solve uh, problems using the forward and backwards paths so we will go through it one by one so the first step is draw the network diagram using the schematic activity view okay so the first what you have to do is you need to draw the network diagram basis all the dependencies which is given in the problem using this schematic view okay next step to calculate the early start and the early finish from start to end so after this we'll solve a problem and you will understand it much better so you can just uh, copy down uh, these uh, four steps on a uh, sheet of paper and uh, whenever you are solving the problem you can refer to it okay so step number two calculate the early start and the early finish from start to end and now a uh, important tip which is maybe you can call the secret tip which i use uh, mostly is you take the maximum number during convergence so when you are in a convergent position of the network activity where there is an early finish of one activity which is seven days and early finish of a second activity which is nine days you take the maximum number for the early start of the next activity if you are having difficulty understanding this uh, just bear with me so whenever i solve the problem you will understand it much better okay so just bear with me so step three which is calculate the late finish and late start now it is from end to start so this is the backward pass so step two was the forward pass and step three is the backward pass and a secret tip here as well which is a pro tip from my end so you can take the minimum number during convergence okay so whenever you find this particular uh, uh, dependency where uh, uh, late start one activity is nine days and uh, late start of a second activity is five days so whenever you are moving back you take the late finish as five days again if you are facing difficulty in understanding what i am saying just bear with me because when i solve the problem you will be able to understand it much better and i'll walk uh, through you uh, walk with you step by step okay and the final step is step four trace the critical path across the path of zero float so as we mentioned previously the critical path is the path of zero float so finally we uh, 
go ahead and mark the critical path along the network diagram which all the activity is having zero float so this is the four step process which you use to solve a cpm problem using forward pass and backward pass method now before i move on to the question uh, i'll again uh, suggest that you note down these uh, four steps and these uh, two diagrams right here so this is the first diagram and this is the second diagram because this will be very important when you are drawing the forward and backward pass and solving problems and remember these two pro tips so whenever during forward pass we take the maximum number during convergence and during backward pass we take the minimum number during convergence okay so now let's go ahead and solve a problem on critical path here is the problem which we will solve today using the forward and backward pass method oops yeah uh, for the ease of understanding i have given the link to download this problem sheet in the description so i'll suggest whenever you start solving the problem just open it up in another tab in your computer or take a print out of that uh, maybe the font side here may be a bit small so you may have difficulty in understanding so you can download the sheet from the link in the description box so let's start now here you see that uh, there is a table which is given so there is activity here there is a preceding activity list here and there is estimate in months okay and uh, there are some activities given here with uh, the preceding activities and uh, the estimate in months and the questions uh, it is asking what is the critical path and its duration what is the near critical path what is the flow of activity b activity e activity d and uh, the sixth question is quite uh, interesting it is asking that what will happen if the duration of d extends to eight days and b extends to 10 days maybe it's not days it will be months because uh, the estimate here is in months so step number one what we'll do is first using the forward and backward pass method we will go ahead and first draw the network diagram okay so feel free to pause the video and uh, go back uh, and understand if you have any difficulty otherwise uh, we will start by drawing the network diagram right now so we will start with the so this is the start and first is activity d So we are following the same uh, schematic view which we learned right now. So D has a duration of 5 months. Next is activity A. So we are making the boxes here so that we can write the late start and early start and all those stuff. Okay. So A has a duration of 7 months next is f so what is f's dependency f is the preceding activity of d and a okay so we draw the arrow like this and we draw the arrow like this okay so there with f next is e So E has a dependency that the preceding activity is D. So there goes E. Next is we have G. So we draw G right here. Same way we keep on making those boxes. We will write the numbers here once we do the forward and backwards part. Uh, so G has a preceding activity of F and E. So we have this dependency as well from F. Okay. Next is B, which is a 
successor of f so we go ahead and draw activity b right here so if you look at this dependency f is the preceding activity of b so here f is the preceding activity of b next is h which is the preceding activity of g so let us draw h somewhere here okay so it is the preceding activity of g so there is a dependency here and the next is C, which is the preceding activity of H. Okay, so we can draw C right here. And if you see the last part, the end has a preceding activity of C and B. So if we draw the end here, we can call it end. So it has a dependency from C and it has a dependency from B. Okay. So that is my network diagram. So my network diagram is complete. Now what we'll do is I'll quickly write the durations of the activities for F. So F is eight days, E is, sorry, months, E is nine months, G is uh, six months, B is six months as well, H is eight months, and C is nine months. So now my network diagram is complete. I'll start with the forward press before that maybe i can do this linking as well so since a and d are both start activities so it has a linkage from this uh, start piece step number two we will start with the forward pass so in forward pass what we'll do is we will write down the early start and the early finish of each activity okay so this is 0 and this is 5, right? So the early start is 0. This is the duration and the early finish is duration plus the early start, which is 5. Similarly, here it's 0. It is 7. Why it is 0? Because it is just the start. So A and D is just starting. So the early start is 0. Next, here comes the interesting piece. Now you have a convergence and you are in the forward pass process so you see the activity d and activity a are converging right here and you are in the forward pass process so going back to pro tip number one during convergence take the maximum in the forward pass so out of five and seven we will take here seven and not five okay so that is what essentially means for the forward pass so next seven plus eight it is fifteen e we start with 5 only because there is no convergence there is a single line here so 5 plus 9 it is 14 okay next this is uh, 15 15 plus 6 that takes us to 21 here again you see there is a convergence there is a convergence of E and F. So we are in the forward pass. So for convergence, we will take the maximum. So we will take 15. Okay. So 15 plus 6, 21. So this is 21 again. 21 plus 8. This is 29. And this is 29 plus 9 that takes us to 38 okay and that completes the forward pass process so you see that after the forward pass we have all the early start and the early finish of all the activities written 
now we will start with the backward pass so backward pass starts for like this you fill up the last activities late finish so this is 38 okay so 38 minus 9 so that takes us to 29 again okay now here it is uh, we are going back so it is 29 29 minus 8 that takes us to 21 okay now here it is also 38 because uh, this is the maximum uh, number in the forward pass so you can write end as 38 so the two activities which is linked to the end is c and b so both of them will have a late finish of 38 okay so 38 minus 6 which takes us to 32 right here uh, going up so we have uh, for activity g it is 21 this goes to 21 minus 6 that is 15 again for activity e it is 15 because there is a single line 15 minus 9 that takes us to 6 here now again interesting you have a convergence here so if you see that g and b they are converging to activity f so with uh, my second pro tip take the minimum number during convergence for the backward pass process okay so between 15 and 32 we will take here 15 and not 32 okay since we are in the backward backward pass and 15 minus 8 that takes us to 7 okay now we have 7 here and we have 6 here so there is also another convergence see so activity e and activity f they are converging to activity d so we take the minimum which is 6 6 minus 5 it is 1 so 7 so this will also be 7 and this is 7 minus 7 that takes us to 0. So with that we complete all the forward pass and the backward pass process and now what we'll do is we will change the color of the pen maybe we take it as dark red and we will trace the critical path. Now how you will know what is the critical path you will go by the path of zero float so if you see activity a has zero float right maybe let us change the thickness of the pen so you are able to understand much better more thick pen yeah that's better so activity a has zero float zero minus zero seven minus seven so that's zero so activity a is on critical path next is activity f so if you see early start early finish late start late finish the difference between all is zero so this is also on critical path next is activity g right next is activity h next is activity c and that brings us to the end of the process so if i trace the critical path it will look somewhat like this so this then this then this this and finally this so what the first question what is the critical path and its duration so the critical path is a f g h and c and the duration is 38 months clear now the next question what is the near critical path so if you see uh, the path of d e g h and c so maybe we can uh, change the color of the pen just to help you understand much better let's go with this color this path of d e g h and c okay if you add up the sum is 37 so that is the 
near critical path so the answer to this question is d e g h and c so that is 37 months and that is the near critical path okay the next question it is asking is what is the float on activity b okay so if i go to activity b right here what is the float float is late start minus early start or late finish minus early finish so the float on activity b is 32 minus 15 or 38 minus 21 which is 17 months okay so that is the float on activity b what is the float on activity e which is 6 minus 5 or 15 minus 4 so 1 1 month what is the float on activity d so it is again 1 month 1 minus 0 or 6 minus 5 so 1 month so the activities of d e or b so there are some buffer so the project manager can choose to deprioritize some of these activities and focus on the critical path activities which is a f g h and c okay so we have answered question number four and question number five six is an interesting question what will happen if the duration of d extends to eight and b extends to ten months okay so for that we will uh, just uh, erase uh, this uh, network diagram and draw the network diagram with this uh, two constraints where uh, d extends to eight months and b extends to ten months so we have uh, drawn the network diagram here and we have corrected this also so it is e to 10 months and d extends to 8 months so we have uh, mentioned it here as well okay now we have written the durations accordingly over the boxes and now what we'll do is we will start the forward pass okay so d is uh, starts with 0 this is 8 a is 0 this is 7 now here you see there is a convergence so we take the maximum since we are in the forward pass okay so 8 plus 8 that goes to 16 here it is 8 8 plus 10 that goes to 18 okay now for b here it is 16 16 plus 6 that goes to 22 okay now if you see here there is another convergence so e and f it is converging to g so we will take the maximum right so it is 18 so it's 18 plus 6 there goes to 24 for h it is 24 plus 8 that goes to 32 this is 32 plus 9 that is 41 and so the end here is with 41 so that completes the forward pass now we will start the backward pass okay so it's 41 that's 32 that's 32 this goes to 24 for g it is 24 this is 18 moving on for b it is 41 so 41 minus 6 this is 35 okay now for e it is 18 18 minus 10 that goes to 8 now here if you see there is a convergence we are in the backward pass so we will take the minimum which is 18 so this goes to 10 now again you see here at activity d there is another convergence where e and f is converging to d so we will take the minimum which is 8 this is 0 so for this this goes to 10 and this goes to 3 okay so that completes the backward pass as well so now we will go and identify those activities which has the zero float 
okay so let's change the color of this pen um so let's uh, start so d has zero float okay so d is on critical path e has zero float so e is also on critical path same goes with g same goes with h and same goes with c okay so what is my critical path it is d e g h and c okay so we will write here now the critical path becomes d e g h and c and the duration is 41 months right now what is the float of b it is 16 minus 35 or 35 minus 16 or 41 minus 22 that is 19 days uh, months okay um what is the float of f it is 2 months right 10 minus 8 or 18 minus 16 and the float of a is 3 months right so a f and b they are not on critical path because they have floats present in their system so maybe the project manager if he wants to optimize he can deprioritize uh, the activities of a f and b for some time and focus on the critical path activities which is d e g h and c now if you notice a very interesting thing has just happened so if you see this critical path which is uh, d e g h and c this was actually the subcritical path or the near critical path for question number two right now what has happened is since the durations of two activities of the subcritical path which is uh, activity d and activity e they have increased the subcritical path has now become the critical path and that is the uh, important concept that we were discussing right that uh, a project manager has to keep a close watch on the critical path as well as the subcritical critical path because uh, you never know when uh, the activities on your subcritical path gets delayed and your subcritical path becomes the critical path so this is an important takeaway guys that uh, as a project manager you need to focus both on your critical path as well as the near critical path okay so that brings us to the end of the full session uh, to summarize so we have learned the concepts of critical path we have learned why the near critical path is also as important as the critical path we have understood the concept of float uh, we have understood uh, a different uh, tips and tricks to draw the network diagram uh, the schematic network diagram view and we have solved uh, two network diagram problems as well okay and uh, this discussion which we had remains the same whether uh, you are a management student or an engineering student or operations research student so uh, the steps what we discussed if you follow these steps you will be able to solve uh, any critical path method problem very easily and the good part with uh, these kind of problems are that uh, they come with a series of questions so if you get uh, the network diagram right you can get uh, at least two to three questions uh, uh, in the series completely correct okay so thank you and all the best let me know in the comment section below your thoughts about this video if you have liked this video give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and press the bell icon to never miss another update i'll see you again in my next video bye bye